All right, good evening, folks. I'd like to call to order the King George County School Board regular meeting. This evening, we will be joined by the King George High School uh, NJROTC students who will lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take your seats. All right, thank you. Would you all like to introduce yourselves? I know we do have a um, NJROTC update on the agenda this evening, but you're welcome to speak and introduce us and introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you do if you'd like. Yes, um, so first and foremost, I would like to thank all you guys up there for taking a little part of your time to uh, let us share um, what the NJROTC program is about. Um, so starting off, I'm Lieutenant Brown. I'm the uh, exec exec uh, executive officer of the uh, Fox Company at uh, the King George NJRTC program. Um, we are ranked one of the top uh, units in Area 5. So that includes uh, Virginia, Maryland, and uh, DC area. Um, and you see that within every one of the cadets in the program. On Wednesdays, walking around the halls, you see them wearing the uniforms, you see they're wearing them with pride, and you see that how they excel in the classroom. Um, you guys will get a chance to meet some of those cadets at our annual military ball. Um, that we will be having uh, April 9th. Um, doing that, you'll see some of our drill team med me uh, members <laughs> perform. Thank you. Um, they perform a sword detail and a cake detail. And some of these cadets, um, especially drill team, they come in uh, roughly around six in the morning to practice these drill routines and to do do that, which is uh, definitely a feat for for, um, for cadets that are doing drill, school, and sports afterwards. So they're definitely dedicated to this program. And uh, I would also like to talk about our rifle team program. Um, recently, we had two cadets go up to Navy Nationals. Um, Cadet uh, Chief Taylor and uh, Lieutenant Commander Weeberg. Um, Chief Taylor, he, uh, he uh, went to Nationals and he did pretty well. And Lieutenant Commander Weeberg, he, uh, he did pretty good at Nationals. Now he's moving on to all service up in Ohio. So we're all wishing him luck. Um, and now I'd like to pass it on to my supply officer, Ensign uh, Suat. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just want to thank you all once again for giving us the opportunity to share our uh, NJRTC experience. Uh, I am Ensign Suyat. I am the supply officer of uh, King George High School NJRTC. And uh, I just want to share my um, experience, uh, my personal experience. I'm an NS2, which means that I've been in um, ROTC for about two years. And it's just taught me so much, such as uh, being responsible, um, being mature, and uh, just being a better person. And I wanna uh, just pass on the mic to Chief Drury. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Chief Petty Officer Drury, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to what we have to say. Um, I am the PT team commander, um, so I handle after school practices um, for physical fitness, and we compete in different events, push ups, sit ups, and different running events. Um, I've been in, I'm an NS3. I've been in ROTC for three years. Um, and ROTC has taught me a lot about responsibility, leadership, and um, we go by a, a, we have core values, Navy core values, honor, courage, and commitment. And we definitely go by those. Um, the unit, it, it's not just a school unit. It feels like a family. Um, I consider everybody here brothers and sisters. Um, but um, I'd like to pass off the um, to Chief Teak. Um, Chief Teak. <clears throat> uh, again, I want to thank you all for listening to what we have to say. I'm Cadet Chief Teak. I'm the uh, drill team commander for the Fox Company. Um, Rotsi's taught me a lot about being a better person, like being responsible and they always hold you accountable to your actions. I want to pass it over to uh, Cadet Petty Officer First Class Matson. 
Good evening. I'm Cadet Petty Officer First Class Matson. Thank you all for having us again. And my experience is I am an NS1, so first year, and I've had a lot of fun. Definitely keeping me motivated and can't wait to do more. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. It's good to hear from you. Thank you, guys. All right, at this time, we will move on to our recognition for the evening. So first up this evening, we have our PTA County Council Reflections from Ms. Rinko. I think you need a bigger table. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for that quick moment to get organized. Madam Chair, Dr. Benson, and all distinguished members of the King George County School Board, I come before you tonight as president of the King George County Council of PTAs. Each year, students from grades pre-K through 12 are invited to create theme-based artwork for their annual National PTA Reflections Art Contest. The arts program was founded in 1969 by Mary Lou Anderson, and since then, millions of students have participated. This year's theme was I will change the world by. It inspired many students to enter our contest. Winners were chosen by each of the building level PTAs and then building level first place finishers moved up to the county council level for consideration. It is my privilege to present to you this evening the PTA reflections winners at the county level. In the primary category, we have first place from Potomac Elementary for Primary Visual Arts, Aubrey Heisel. Second place from King George Elementary School for Primary Visual Arts, Mr. Miles Bland. Welcome, Miles. This is yours. And this is yours. <laughs> Just come up here. There'll be some more to join you in a minute. We don't bite. <laughs> And in the primary special artist category of photography, first place, Becca Tridle. <laughs> Moving on to the intermediate category for music composition from King George Elementary School, as well as the intermediate literature category, taking a second first place, we have Sarah Zook. First place, intermediate photography, Mr. Connor Pallard from King George Elementary School. And in intermediate visual arts, first place, Cole Pollard, King George Elementary School.
Special Artist Photography category from King George Elementary School. First place, Wyatt Lamb. And in Special Artist Visual Arts category from King George Elementary School, Dylan Lamb. Moving on to the middle school category. Ooh, let me move, find my, find my things here. There they are. Moving on to the middle school category for the category of film production, Vivian Rinko. And in the literature category from King George Middle School, first place goes to Kaylee Landreth. Congratulations, thank you. Callie Landreth. And for middle school music composition, moving forward, first place, King George Middle School, Emma Mendenhall. For middle school photography from King George Middle School, Anya Muth. Congratulations, Anya Muth. And moving on to visual arts, first place from King George Middle School, we have the creator of this beautiful sculpture, and that is Ava Pursley. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, you're fine. All right, moving on to high school. In the category of visual arts, we have first place, Raiden Can. For high school photography, first place, Haley Comerford. And first place, first place and in high school literature from King George High School, Mr. Cody Lamb. Congratulations, everyone. Mm -hmm. There was the opportunity for people to submit physical projects or pictures of projects this year. So you see that some people have a smattering here of physical projects. The others were all taken pictures and they all first place finishers have moved on for consideration at the state level. So happy this year to be able to recognize all winners from the reflections program at the county council level. Thank you all so much. Let's get a good picture. <laughs> Sure. You're welcome to come up. <laughs> and now we will move on to our Piedmont Regional Science Fair participants, Ms. Sanders. Good evening. My name is Sherry Sanders. I'm the science department head at the middle school. This past January, we had our annual science fair. We had um, volunteers from the Dahlgren base come and judge our projects, and they chose um, 20 students to go on to the regional, the Piedmont Regional Science Fair. Those students were 
Kiara Amadera Riviera, Sarah Parker, Cameron Luffman, Addison Davis, Trainin Langa, Michael Caro, Logan Sanders, Jackie Morello, Ashley Hurdle, Gus Carley, Callie Landreth, Elijah Tritt, Arissa Brummett, Olivia Wilkerson, Nathan Roby, Grace Zook, Anya Muth, Delaney Brown, Kaylee White, Vivian Patterson, Kaylin Graves, and Laura Tolley. The Piedmont Regional Science Fair was this past Saturday in Charlottesville. Our students did amazing. We had a lot of awards. Honorable mention went to Anya Muth, Nathan Roby, Olivia Wilkerson, Callie Landreth, Gus Carley, Laura Tolley, Logan Sanders, and Trainin Langa. We had a third place winner, that was Sarah Parker. We had two second place winners, Eli Tritt and Michael Caro. We had a first place winner, um, Arissa Brummett, and we had a special award from the Office of Naval Research that went to Gus Carley. So I'm going to have students come up and tell you their name and briefly what they did for their project. Who would like to go first? Volunteers? Come on, Elijah. Um, I'm Eli Tritt. Oh, I'm, I'm Eli Tritt, and I did my project on, I wanted to know which type of mask covers a sneeze most effectively. Um, so I had the system set up where I would spray water at high pressure through different masks and measure how much splatter went onto the paper through the mask. What did you find? Um, I found out that the only mask that is 100% effective at covering a sneeze was the N95 respirator out of my test group. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Parker, and my project was on gel electrophoresis, which is a machine that separates DNA into its different parts based on size. And I was testing um, food dye and seeing how it separated into its different parts based on size, like it was DNA. Very cool. Thank you. Hi, I'm Addison Davis, and my project was on how much, uh, I, I didn't want to see, um, <laughs> I had gummy bears and I put them into different solutions to see how each solution would affect the mask before and after. Hi, I'm Logan Sanders and I tested how the orientation of a 3D pari affects its strength. Very cool. Hi. My name is Trayan Langa, and I found what happened when I submerged gummy bears into different types of liquids, and I measured how much the gummy bear affected its mass. Oh, did you two team up and compare your results? No? no? It okay. Was, it was a complete coincidence. <laughs> My name is Nathan Roby, and um, I studied whether the temperature of magnets affect their strength, and it ended up making them weaker. Good finding. Uh, my name is Gus Carley, and I measured al how much does copper stop algae growth in a bird bath. How, did, how well did it work? Uh, any amount of copper stopped algae growth. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go put a penny in my bird bath when I get home. Hi, my name is Cameron Luffman, and I tested to see how essential oils affected, well, essential oils versus petrochemicals. Any key findings? Um, lemon broke down petrochemicals to quickest. Say it again. Lemon what? Lemon essential oil broke down petrochemicals to, petrochemicals to quickest. Okay. Hi, my name is Callie Landreth, and I tested to see which beverages had the greatest amount of, of well, the greatest effect on your teeth. Was it soda? What was it? Um, it was actually coffee for color change and vinegar, which represents acidic drinks like lemonade um, that 
had the greatest amount of enamel change. Okay, don't drink vinegar, got it. <laughs> so students that got first or, or second place in the Piedmont Regi Regional Science Fair have the opportunity to go on to, they call it a master um, competition, uh, which is in DC in the fall. So we hope we have a few that can go on to that. But I just wanna say thank you tonight for having us and for recognizing the hard work of all of our students. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Franco, do we have any public comment this evening? We do not. Mr. Vance, do we have any comment online? No. Wow, setting a record here, two meetings in a row. All right. Okay, at this time, do we have any changes to the agenda? Madam Chair, just one recommendation. Since last meeting last week, we have no other um, COVID protocol update. So I'd recommend the board um, bypass that information item. All right. Yes, uh, in doing so, is it, uh, unless we need to, we'll keep it off of future agendas if that's okay with the board. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, unless there are objections, we'll go ahead and remove that from the agenda. Can I make a statement about that? If um, the state or the federal government or CDC or somebody, you know, direct some sort of change based on COVID or something. I know sometimes, Dr. Benson, you feel obligated to make that change. And then maybe at that point, of course, it would come up on the agenda, I assume. Okay. Okay. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I would like to move to revisit the protocol for requesting agenda items from last meeting. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Um, chair votes aye. Motion carries. So we'll add that um, to, let's see, we'll, end, we'll add that to the discussion items after the health insurance reads. Okay, next we have a presentation on uh, an update from our NJROTC. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Benson, Dr. Boyd. Appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to come up. Um, I think I've now met everybody officially, Major Grant Callahan and Mass Sergeant Jeff Helker. Um, I w just wanted to take a few minutes and I'll try not to uh, let the passion for the program consume too much of your time, but but I do want to provide, it's, it, I would call it uh, NGRTC overview, um, NGRTC 101. What I, what I put in front of you is um, kind of a typical letter that I would give um, to eighth graders and their parents, um, which really is very simply put what, what NGRTC is, what it isn't, and, and uh, some of our um, more targeted populations um, that, that we would hope to get into our program. First off, um, what it is, um, it's, it's a program that you know, is, is federally funded to create better citizens. Um, it's, it's really, I, I could move on to my next topic, what it's not, and just stop right there. Our job um, is to create better citizens. Uh, we do that uh, through self-confidence, physical fitness, mental endurance, physical endurance, um, and, and things similar to that. Um, obviously, both of us, um, not obviously, but both of us are retired Marines. Um, so the program, of course, has a pretty strong military flavor, um, but it's, it's targeted to much more than just those that want to join the military. Uh, a couple of the other bullets and talked about, you know, field trip and scholarship opportunities um, resembling a family. Uh, one of my cadets earlier, I think it was Chief Jury talked about um, the family atmosphere that's created in our program. Um, high school will be on the block schedule. Uh, we only have these kids one of the two semesters for the school year, but everything that we do um, is is open uh, to to all cadets, regardless of what program they're in. For example, we're we're going today's Monday. We're going Wednesday to the Marine Corps Museum. Pretty excited about that. Getting getting a field trip back back on the books. So Mass Arm will be taking a, um, a group of cadets with a mixture of first and semester um, cadets up to the Marine Corps Museum. 
what our what NJRTC is not, um, it's it's not boot camp. Um, nobody uh, kicks, punches, swears at 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 these young cadets. Um, it's not uh, a feeder for the military. Um, my my job performance has no has no correlation with how many seniors um, join end up joining the military. Um, there, there. I, I have some a couple stats at the end, which will speak to the senior class and another data point that I think you'll find interesting. Um, so I'm just going to move move on to the types of students that we're looking for, um, and and really it's it's um, it's anybody that wants to become a better person. Really, simply put, um, during COVID, once uh, once sports teams resumed, uh, that was really our only accessible population that we could kind of recruit to. Uh, so I made it a point to, to get to every um, every sport that the middle school had to offer and, and talk to those kids um, about the program and uh, the, the benefits of it um, across, across all perspectives, regardless of what they are interested in. And really, really trying to um, break down uh, the, the myth that our program is linked to the military of course, cadets wear a uniform once a week that, that another cadet was mentioning. So um, I guess it could be easily uh, thought that there's some connection to life after high school and having to join the military service, which, which is absolutely um, not true. Uh, a few of the three data points that I just want to briefly cover and um, wrap things up. This, this year we have uh, 16 seniors graduating. Um, we, we do have a high, everything I just said, um, this year, uh, our numbers are leaning much more heavily, um, towards the military. Out of those 16 seniors, nine are enlisting in the military. One will attend the, uh, United States Naval Academy. One, uh, will, will do a NROTC program at the college level. She's going to ODU. And another one is going to have the choice, um, between an NROTC unit and the uh, United States Coast Guard Academy. So that's that's kind of the makeup of our 16 seniors um, this year. Last year we had 21, we had 21 seniors and uh, less than 50% uh, joined, joined the military, uh, whether it be enlisting or a commissioning source as an officer following college. So that number last year was, was less than 50%. And um, again, it, it of course, it's going to be different with each cohort. Um, but what we preach to the kids from day one, as a as a NS NS one first level cadet, is that you know your success is completely subjective uh, based upon your goals. What you do after high school is irrelevant as long as it's it's working towards the goals that you have in life. And our program is is going to help you along the way. So so that's one of a, one of the big things that we preach. Uh, the last data point, this semester, we have um, 30, 30 NS1s, first-year cadets, mainly freshmen, but not all. I think we think we have, out of the 30, we have six sophomores and two juniors that are taking RTC for the first, for, for the first year. But anyhow, out of those 30 individuals, uh, only 10, I asked a question week one of the semester, and I said, uh, you know, if you were graduating high school tomorrow, um, what would you do after that? Would you join, not what would you do? Specifically, um, do you have any intention to join the military? And uh, 10, 10 of those individuals raised their hand. So, which is, of course, only a third, math and public. Uh, but a third of those individuals were interested in military, which, which is great. You know, we'll, we'll see three years from now where that cohort is and um, what you know maybe that number will will stay at 30 percent join the military maybe it'll increase maybe it'll decrease but again circling back to my larger point it, it's it doesn't matter to us um it's it's that they're going to be successful and that we've hopefully uh provided them some of the necessary tools in order to be successful and chase after their dreams uh whatever that may be and um with that being said if you have any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them but I know you guys got a busy evening, and those are some of the highlights that I wanted to uh, to impress upon you all. Certainly, thank you, Major Callahan. I have yep. uh, just one quick question. <clears throat> you mentioned the numbers that end up joining the military, 
Uh, how many, I'm assuming it's almost all of them, if they don't go in the military, how many go to college in your program? So out of the 16 seniors for this year, uh, nine were enlisting, three were ROTC or service academy, uh, that's 12, three were college, and one uh, plans to go straight in the workforce. So pretty good, okay. Pretty darn high, yes sir. And then that, the other one plans to pursue some sort of um, IT type related job that he's get right into. Yes, sir. Additional questions or comments, Mr. Rolls? Uh, Major Gallon, I hear great things about the program. I know you have some very excited cadets, so thank you for what you do. It's, I know it makes a big impact. And I, I notice on the bottom of the sheet, it says learn to be, un be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Is that a long standing motto or what's the story behind that? Hmm. Just, I was just pausing for a second to uh, to decide how I was going to answer the question, <laughs> sir. Um, in in the um, I'll answer it this way. In in the military, there's a there's a common phrase called "embrace the suck," um, and and that saying is, "Hey, it is what it is. Em embrace the situation you're in and do the best." Um, so that saying is translated to the high school approved version, which is learn to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. I would, I would, I would answer it like that. I, I saw someone wearing, I guess you made some sweatshirts with that on there. So I saw that and I was wondering what that is. So I just found out pretty quickly. That's yes, I, uh, our stocks were depleted um, and, and we, we don't have any on the shelves. Otherwise I would have tried to bring some this evening, but uh, rest assured next time we, we uh, put in an order, we'll, uh, you'll have the opportunity to wear some of our swag. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested, and we talked briefly about uh, your recruiting and, and your encouragement of middle school students into your program. And you mentioned that, that this has already gone out to parents. Yes, ma'am. We tried to, we got everybody, um, the high school goes over, I think a week, a week or two weeks before eighth graders start putting their requests in and, and start doing their process mm -hmm. um, and and there was an opportunity for us uh, we we're over there in the auxiliary gym at the middle school and eighth graders cycled through and, and I was able to get those in the hands of as many people as, as came to me <laughs> that's wonderful yes, thank you thanks all right thank you major Callahan okay thank you yes sir thank you and then um, Sorry, I should have said it. No, go ahead. If I can get one more second. Um, on that um, invitation that you all received, uh, if you could just um, pay attention to the uh, to the due date, please. Just uh, we fully anticipate selling out to, to this ball. We've sold over over 100 tickets right now, and um, we, we have you earmarked. And, and just if we can hear back, that'd be fantastic. Should be a great event. All right, great. Thank you. There you go. All right. At this time, we have our consent agenda for the evening. We have minutes from the February 14th, 2022 regular meeting. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the agenda for February 14th. Is that right? Yes. The minutes for the agenda on February 14th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries. Next up, we have our discussion items this evening. Our health insurance rates for 2022-2023, Dr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, um, in the packet is included a table uh, of our insurance rates uh, for next year. And we're very pleased um, that you'll see the, the increase is relatively minor when it comes to health insurance at least and uh, and that they are all under four percent so we have uh, in the preliminary draft of our budget we have incorporated the increased um, cost we have uh, we have put that cost on the employer's side that way we do not dilute any compensation increase the board is ultimately able to afford employees um, and so with that this one is a little tricky time-wise because we typically adopt a final budget after we engage in the open season for employees or prepare the materials at least for open season for employees. 
Um, so each year we come to the board uh, with this chart, we ask that you consider for approval uh, the rates as publicized for next year for our employees. That way, those who help facilitate the open season um, process can begin preparing packets for our employees to get that underway. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Are any questions for Dr. Benson? Mr. Rolls, go ahead. I think you may have already answered it, Dr. Benson, but uh, so you're saying waiting through the normal budget process is typically going to be too late for this? It does. It puts us right, you know, a couple of weeks too late to prepare the materials and get that process going so that we can get employees enrolled in their, uh, in their respective uh, choice for those who take it. But it has worked well in the past. Um, it's just... Uh, it's just one of those things timing wise where it just doesn't necessarily coincide with our budget process but um again um we're pleased that the the, the increase we feared it would be much higher but we're, the increase is relatively minor and that's good news for um, everybody yeah a couple of questions um i'm assuming that um for many years we have shared the cost um with the individual employee for their insurance correct we have I know that years and years ago that wasn't true, and so that part is nice. But um, do we? And I'm, I'm sorry, this is just ignorance on my part. Do we um, securing a um, health insurance, a dental insurance um, company? I, I'm sorry, it's the process in which we do that. We renew with this. Uh, the local choice is currently the um, the provider uh, that we work with, and so we renew each year, or we have for the last four with the local choice. Prior to that, we did engage in a um, process where we assessed because the increases we were receiving with the prior provider um, were just becoming, you know, double digit increases per year. Right. We engaged um, in that kind of competitive review process and ultimately then um, made the decision to switch providers to the local choice. And how often do we do that? Um I don't know that we have a set number of years in which we do that. Um, I think that basically if we anticipate or we begin to realize increases that seem, you know, it's time, uh, that's in my 10 years, that's when we, we, we went ahead and engaged in an open process for let's look at some other plans to see if we can make a recommendation that may be better for our employees and our, our board as a whole. But this year we just simply decided to just go with them, the recommendation yes. increase. Yes. Without looking. Is it a long process? Well, another question. Do other divisions our size use the same insurance or different or do you communicate? Um, many do. I know many do use the local choice um, because it's again, it's been the most um, consistent in terms of rates you know, or I guess the, the least volatile for our county, at least. And I know many others that I've talked with have been pleased because from that standpoint, the pool is such where um, you know, it does provide kind of a less volatile option than was the case six years ago or so when we were experiencing those big increases, big jumps. All right. So when do you think will be the next time when we will make a, a study of uh, providers next year, year after? We can look at them any year we want. I, we would need to do that early, though. We probably actually need to begin that right. in the summer um, just to collect the comparative data. So we're happy to do that. Um, but I can tell you that we've with I think we had a, a very slight increase last year. Um, experience wise, when we were receiving just nominal increases, others were receiving huge ones and they were transitioning then to the very option we've chosen. So there's a good justification. Last question. I'm assuming that all the employees take this insurance or is there a small percentage that don't? And if so, um, I would assume they choose other insurances is that a large percentage of the, of the employees or small i would 20 20 percent yeah so i'd say more than half i'd have to get you a more definitive percentage but we do have uh, we have many employees who, who do not opt to take our insurance they may have insurance through a spouse. Right, right. Um, and right. so, but um, at least half, if not, probably two thirds of our employees take our our insurance. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm sorry to ask so many questions. I'm dealing with this with our mission also. I'm involved with looking at insurance every year, so I'm very familiar with that process. And actually, our costs are about the same as the missions, but um, it is something that if you're not careful, you go several years and all of a sudden, wait, um, wow, we're not getting the best deal. You start to hear from other divisions. Yeah. But I do think that if you if you looked at it, you said three years ago? Four. Four years ago? Yeah. Uh, this is well, you, I, 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 I guess I could make a motion. <laughs> I would like it. I think five years is quite a while. Not that we would change, but I do think it might be valuable to spend a little bit of time during the summer to look at some comparisons because five years is a long time. Very good. So do I make a motion, Carrie? What do you want? Or just? We, we, we'll okay. Right. Thank you. Any additional comments for Dr. Benson? Ms. Hawk? Yeah. Dr. Cutright? No comment. Thank you. Okay. Um, I didn't have any additional comments, so. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to revisiting our um, agenda item discussion from last week. Um, so I would turn it over to Dr. Cutright, who brought the topic back up for reconsideration. Okay. Um, I move that the school board may submit items for inclusion on the proposed um, agenda item and uh, discussion item I can discuss at this point if you'd like or come back and discuss in a few minutes. Do you mean for like you want to request a, a specific discussion item on the agenda like for a future meeting? Yes. Okay. You... So, so I was going to say if the school board chair determines that it's not prudent to include the item on the proposed agenda because of the higher priority items or too many items to cover in a meeting the chair with permission of the board member submitting the agenda item will place the agenda on a subsequent board meeting. So that's my comment. I'd like to move that any member of the school board may submit items for inclusion on the proposed agenda at this time. Okay. So I can revisit. I'd like to resend um, the um, amendment from last week with the agenda item. Okay, so last week we voted to table the discussion to the March, the May 18th um, training session. Right. And so as a point of order, so the process for rescinding, reconsidering a motion that has been made at a previous, previously as by the board um, is subject to time limits. So in accordance with Robert's rules, I'm at section 3710. So the motion to reconsider can only be made by a member who voted on the prevailing side, that would apply in this case, um, but the making of the motion is subject to time limits as follows. So in the session of one day, such as an ordinary meeting of a club or a one day convention, the motion to reconsider can only be made the same day the vote to be reconsidered was taken. Um, and then it goes on to talk about other things. But so in this case, this would imply that the motion to reconsider that would have needed to be made at the last meeting. So. I'm sure. Mr. Rolls. Therefore, I move to rescind the motion from last time to table the uh, discussion until May 18th. So my point is that we can't do that because that you can no longer rescind the motion that was made at the last you can reconsider, meeting. but you can rescind. Okay. Where, um, remind me where that is in Robert's rules. I don't, I don't have the full one here, but I have a table. Uh, but maybe maybe I can find in the brief here if you want a page reference. I'm seeing in pages 60 to 62. Move to amend. Yeah, as I look, it's page 60. Okay, so are you, so stated again, are you, so, um, so Dr. Cartwright made a motion and so you are amending her motion? No, I mean, we're already discussing the agenda creation, but if we still wanna make sure that's legitimate, we can do that by me moving to rescind the motion from last meeting to uh, table a discussion until May 18th. Okay, do we have a second? A second. Okay, so um, so the question is to 
rescind the discussion from the decision from last meeting to table the topic to the May 18th uh, training session. Okay, so Mr. Rolls, would you, as you the one to present it, would you like to begin the debate? Yes, I mean, I think more discussion is warranted. Uh, I think that the motion last time was improperly made because when it was first said, it was a motion to table, and then we discussed, and then later, right before the vote, the question was restated as a motion to table until May 18th. And two problems with that, you can't change it right before we vote, and also there's no such thing as a table to do something at a later date that would become a motion to postpone until a certain date. So yeah, the change the last minute wasn't good, but then also the point was before that we were trying to discuss and it didn't allow the discussion we needed to come to consensus. So I think that's what I want. I think what Dr. Cutright is getting at too, is to be able to get the consensus on this. Okay, Dr. Cutright. I'm in agreement with Dr. Roll, uh, with Mr. Rolls, thank you. Thank you. Just promoted you. you. Okay, Ms. Hawk. Um, I'm not sure why We've got now four meetings until May 18th. I, I'm not sure why it's so necessary, um, but I, I think we should remain with the table until May 18th. Dr. Mr. Bush. We live in a tumultuous world right now, and there's a lot of things that can take place as we saw from the last couple of years with COVID. Sometimes it was day by day, sometimes week by week, month by month. And there's a lot of things that's going on in the world right now. There's a lot of things in education that's going on. And I think even um, four meetings is actually a long time in this world in education. And a lot of things can happen. And so there may be an opinion of a, of a board member that there's an item that's extremely important that might have to do with the well-being of students or the education of students that waiting until um, the May the 18th to um, you know, submit an agenda item that possibly could be refused by the chair, depending on what the chair would consider a reasonable uh, reason for um, not including that in the agenda. I think this needs to be settled ahead of time because there may be a member that considers it extremely important. And so um, I think that um, four meetings is enough. And then to discuss it at length on May the 18th is fine. But I think between now and then we need to have an agreement because there's too many things that can happen in this world. Okay, so I would remind everyone that the decision to or the the motion to post to table or postpone the discussion to May 18th was to discuss the process of adding agenda items, not to postpone the addition of any agenda items until May 18th. Um, we've had plenty of items added. I'll remind you that using Robert's rules has worked for the board. Um, such as the point that we're discussing this evening. This was an item that was added as, as the majority of the board decided. So um, while I agree, you know, certainly we, as a board, we need to continue developing our norms and protocols and establishing bylaws, all of which can be done on May 18th. Um, I just, it seems to me we're prolonging the conversation in multiple meetings on how to get things added to agenda items when and when to the agenda when we have a process that has worked um, and has worked for this board. Um, so I would still be in favor of discussing, regardless of the outcome of this conversation, I would still be in favor of discussing it at the May 18th training session, be that as it may. Um, so that's my comment. Mr. Rolls? Well, I agree that we don't want to spend too much time belaboring this. So therefore, I move that we, uh, we already have all the question. Oh, you want, okay. That's fine. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Chair votes nay. Motion carries. So. Now. Well, so we just vote on them to call the question or we vote to rescind there? That wasn't we, we, we rescinded it from the, from waiting to discuss it to May 18th. So now we're back to where we were at the last meeting. Yeah. So. Can, can I make a comment? Sure. So we're on discussion, certainly, yes, Mr. It's Bush. still in the same discussion. I, I hear what you said, and a perfect example that you gave about uh, I had requested that this be discussed for two board meetings in a row, and it uh, respectfully was refused by you. And the third time, I did not request it, and it was there last time. So I hear what you're saying, but there's an example of there were three board meetings that occurred from an agenda item that I requested before it came on to the board, which the third time was not requested by me. 
So that's an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. I think that this is important. And there were other items that I had wanted to discuss that um, uh, respectfully your opinion was different than mine and I respect that. But I do think that it's important to um, allow uh, each board member to be able to submit an agenda item without worrying about um, it being refused because there's a difference of opinion. And I respect your opinion because you had mentioned last time two items that I had suggested about discussing masks for staff and masks for buses. And you referred to state law and federal law, which I agree, it was state law and federal law, but I only wanted it to be on the discussion. Um, again, this is, it was an assumption, I think, that you were thinking that some sort of motion would be made, and it might have been, but I just simply wanted to discuss it. And that's why I wanted it on the agenda, and I felt it was extremely important, and it was not on the agenda um, until finally the state themselves made a change. So those are examples of the reasons why I think what Dr. Kreitwright had proposed in uh, uh, making a change to the, um, the BDDC, um, I think um, could be something that we'd like to consider. So. Um, we can discuss this a little farther, but then I definitely have a motion, which is basically the same that Dr. Cartwright had spoke about that I'd like to make in regard to this for the next four meetings. So is this the same item that you both have? Yes. Are there copies for the rest of the board? I had them last time. <laughs> or do you have it electronically where you, you can email it to us? Is that what you yes. Said? yes, it is what I said. Yeah, she has one. There's, uh, it's on the last page, it's highlighted and underlined. The back page where it says motion and then the highlighted and underlined portion. Let me read the paragraph and then you'll understand. I would like to make a motion to add the following sentence to the first paragraph of the King George County School Board Policies and Regulations Section BDDC and School Board Governance and Operations under file name Agenda Preparation and Dis Dissemination. Following the last sentence in the first paragraph, which states, any member of the school board may submit items for inclusion on the proposed agenda, then the motion would be to add this sentence. If the school board chair determines it is not prudent to include the items on the proposed agenda because of other higher priority items or too many items to cover in a meeting, the chair with permission of the board member submitting the agenda item will place the agenda on a subsequent board meeting. That's it. All right, do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. So, all right, Mr. Bush, so you, you stated your case. Would you like to begin with any additional debate on the motion? I think that this is something, as you had discussed, Madam Chair, that um, on May the 18th, we can include a, a further discussion of this. Um, but I think for the next four board meetings, and that could be part of the motion possibly, that um, this would be something that we would abide by for the next meetings until we have a larger discussion um, at the May the 18th meeting. All right, Ms. Hawk? No comments. Dr. Cartwright? I'm in agreement. I think we need to add agendas or items to the agenda in the next couple of meetings. I think there's four or five meetings until May the 18th. Thank you. All right, Mr. Rolls? Madam Chair, did you have another copy of that? Yeah. Oh, here, I'm sorry. I have another one. Here, I think we have enough. Everybody have one? Dr. Benson? Do we have any? Oh, there are a couple. Well, I'm at, I'd like to use some of my time to you'll make a pose a question to like either, well, I'll say to uh, Mr. Bush. So you'll place the agenda on a subsequent board meeting. I think that's a little too imprecise. I mean, that's no, I don't see how it's different than we have right now. I mean, so yeah, I'll, I'll put it eventually. I mean, we can just well, with, never the, put it with the permission of the board member that's submitting the agenda item. So one board member can force it on to. And the word will, I think, is in other words, it cannot be refused. The board chair will put it on a subsequent meeting with permission from the board member submitting the agenda item. So I think that limits that it would not be two or three meetings later. And then the board chair would say, well, you know, we have this gigantic whatever that we have to discuss and make a decision on. And um, so then the board member may think, well, I think that this is a priority item. So it'd be a discussion they would have, but it could not be a refusal. There's the key, trying to leave the power with the board chair, but not allow for a refusal of another board member to put agenda items on the agenda. I understand. No further right. comment. Um, so my, 
I, this language I think is not terribly different than how we have been operating. So I'm, I have no real objection to that. My only concern is this motion is specifically to update our policy, um, which I am not comfortable doing without getting VSBA concurrence with that, as we do with all of our other policies. Um, I would be in favor of adopting that language, that that I've not the word policy is not the right word, but protocol and operating that way. Um, but if we want to add it to the policy, I believe it would be prudent to have that run through VSB and brought back as a policy review at a later date. Madam Chair, and as a question, uh, could it be added as a regulation, a, a temporary regulation? Mm -hmm. I, I share your concern. It's my, my very serious concern about the, the VSBA ruling. And it's not out of disrespect to anybody. I, I think it's very, very appropriate discussion, but I, I do, um, I, I always take seriously the issue of liability and legal protection that is afforded by VSBA over our policy. So um, if we're talking for the next, month we're we talking i guess uh yeah so March, april and part of may so dr benson the regulations how do we typically handle those they're they're local you can certainly um as ms hawk suggests you could have a regulation that guides the implementation of policy b d a d d c c in this case BDC. you could do that if you did uh, i agree if you wanted to amend language in the policy directly um, you'd probably want to put it on action for your next meeting and in the interim, just get a, you know, vet it through your attorney and VSBA. But either way, you could proceed. So say it again. So you said uh, draft the regulation and vet it through. You, you or the have this attorney. as a standalone regulation that supports that policy. Mm -hmm. Or you could, if you, if this, I don't know which way you, you all want this. If you want it embedded in the actual policy, then typically you would, you would want to vet it. it through VSPA, but in this case, you've already discussed it. One meeting, you could put it at action for the very next. Yeah, I would agree since I, made, since I made the motion, I don't have a problem with having it as a standalone. However, there is a further question about items that Dr. Benson, you had stated this, um, when we want to make changes to governance and procedures for uh, the school board, I know it might be prudent to go through the VSPA, but it is not, absolutely necessary is my understanding is that correct okay correct. so provided you're not in conflict with any right i'm saying this generically about all policy i understand conflict with any state law or that type of thing. and that's that's what i agree with so we could make this change even right now if we wanted to to the policy and procedures i'm not saying we we will but i'm saying that we could we have the authority to do that because it's only a recommendation that we would go and i agree with dr benson we would want to be careful that nothing is illegal we're doing so in, in order for a consensus with all this and for um, an ease of understanding, I would agree. I'll make this as a separate motion that we will do as a procedure that's not necessarily part of the governance until May the 18th that we'll adopt this procedure. In other words, it's the motion is the same. I'm just not adding it to. So do you want to amend your motion? You're saying you don't want to leave it as a part of a policy update, but it could be a standalone, either regulation or a separate protocol. Yeah, the actual motion I read is can be a standalone since okay. that would be a much larger discussion. I understand. So would you like to amend your motion that we're considering? Okay, I don't know if that was in the motion itself. So you call it a regulation or not? No, I'm saying that I will not call it one this time for ease of understanding. It can be a standalone motion that we as a board agree to follow until May the 18th. Okay, so can I, so I'll take a stab at it. So sounds like you'd, you'd be interested in amending your motion instead of saying I make a motion to um, to add the following to the King George County School Board policy. The motion would remove that part and say your motion, you would like to make a motion um, for, with regards to agenda, meeting agenda creation, if the school board chair determines it's not prudent, da, 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 da. And then we would adopt this as a. Yeah, it's the part that I underlined and highlighted. Yes. yes. Okay. Did you get that, Ms. Franco? Do you have a copy of it there? We would adopt it as a process. Sure. Process yes. to be used by the school board for the next until May the 18th. 
All right. All right, I think we're all on the same page. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, chair votes aye. Motion carries. All right, information items for the evening. Do we have any committee reports? Mr. Bush. No, I'm still waiting to meet with my committee. <laughs> Understand. Uh, well, that, that's a question, Dr. Benson. Um, it, I, I don't know how, I know everybody's very busy and I know the one that's uh, chairman of the two committees that I'm on is very busy. Is it normal to wait three or four months or I'm just wondering, that's a question I have. Sorry. Which committees are you? The health and then the code of conduct that I share with uh, Dr. Cartwright. It's not uncommon as we prepare for next year, particularly with the code of conduct, that we'll wait for, that committee will wait for any statutory updates that come as real as the right. General Assembly. And then we'll update that document for next year. So that's not uncommon for that committee to meet late in the calendar year, later okay. than this. And what about the health? I can check on that and see. Okay. I understand about the code of conduct. I was. Anyway, but I know people are busy, but I feel funny never having a committee report because we haven't met yet. I'll check with her. Thank you. All right, Ms. Hawk. No committees. <clears throat> Dr. Cartwright. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I attended the Special Education Advisory Committee on March the 1st at the school, board's, the school board office. It also meets online. Um, basically, there was a presentation on uh, critical decisions, part three for children with disabilities. It was a guide for parents that focuses on self-advocacy. Uh, very important for uh, parents who are planning their high school, middle school, and post-education uh, plans. Uh, the new business, they reviewed the special education annual plan uh, for the year, and the next meeting will be May the 3rd, same time, five o'clock, online and at the school board office. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Mr. Rolls? None. All right. I do not have any committee reports this evening either. All right. Dr. Benson, over to you with the FY22-23 budget. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, so last week we received, or the Department of Education at the state released their, um, what we call calc sheets, or the calculation spreadsheets that we use to um, estimate revenue on the state side for the next fiscal year. Um, this year is, uh, is an interesting year, a unique year, I think, budget-wise for the state. Um, I've outlined this uh, in an email to you all, but I'll repeat it for uh, public knowledge. There, is a, um, there are several issues that they are now resolving in, in conference. In other words, each house uh, adopts a budget bill. They send it to the other house. Typically, the other house will reject the budget bill from the Senate or, or um, House of Representatives respectively, and then they form a committee, a budget committee between the two houses to then resolve differences, ultimately yielding a, a compromise bill that the governor then considers and perhaps sends on to the General Assembly let me, for approval. Um, in our state revenue projected um, for the first draft of the budget, we have a line in there that's called construction um, costs. And it uh, right now has been carried through to the Senate version of the budget bill that has been dropped from the House version. Uh, that revenue is about two or 1.5 million, I believe, for King George County. And so there's there's great variance potential in terms of the revenue. Um, I explained this in a meeting to Mr. Miller, the county administrator, and to um, the staff, the financial staff here. Uh, we agreed it would be best if we could get um, hopefully some resolution to that issue and a few others that will be impactful to our state revenue here in King George before we then proceed with a, um, a proposed expenditure plan for the county to consider. And so um, all that to say, um, I'm hopeful the board then, we are currently working on a draft two for you and we're ready to, we're kind of poised waiting for decisions to come out of Richmond. If they come out before the end of the week, we can incorporate those into this next draft for you. But um, we'd like to present to you on the 23rd, if you're willing to establish a work session that evening, um, a draft two, which will incorporate any changes we understand happened during this, this week. The General Assembly session is set to end after this week. So we're hopeful they'll re resolve things by the end of the week. Um, we would present that to you on the 23rd. Um, 
we would then, you have a regularly scheduled meeting on the 28th where you could then conceivably approve that second draft for forward to the Board of Supervisors and they have agreed to establish June um, the 30th of March as the date for the joint meeting. So it simply pushes the joint meeting back one week. We utilize the same date we were gonna have the joint meeting as a work session for you all to get an updated draft that incorporates more timely information, basically. All right, and I believe I heard from everyone that the 23rd worked for a work session, correct? Right, I think so, yep. yeah. okay. I did have a question about the 30th. Um, tentatively, we'll be presenting it on the 30th to the Board of Supervisors, is yes. that? Okay, does that require, and I'm sorry, I just, maybe I wrote an email to everybody in response to that. Is that expected that we would all be there? You're certainly invited. Because um, that's the one I can't make. Yeah, I think, and we can certainly see if you can um, participate virtually. I mean, that's up to okay. you. Yes. It's, um, it's typically just kind of a presentation. It's not necessarily been a lot of question and answer historically. I don't know, both boards have new membership. Um, so yes. I'm not sure what it will entail, quite frankly, but um, it's certainly an opportunity just for us to present and break down the budget request. Some years, um, it's been thank you very much, and they'll take that into consideration as they continue to meet with other county departments. And then in the end, they'll have discussion of that process, which could be a week or two later. Now, nights they do ask questions. Is this mostly you presenting on the 30th, and we're all here, though? We may not make comments, I understand that, but it's primarily you presenting the budget to the Board of Supervisors, correct? Mostly. Okay. Unless somebody else wants. No, well, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not involved, no, but uh, and I'll get with Mr. Vance to make sure that I can get online to do that, Mr. Vance. We could check. Peterson. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I'm just curious, how do, do we sit out there? Or how does it? Are we all in here? We, I'm not sure the location. Sometimes they've had it here. Sometimes they've had it down at the firehouse. Um, when we're here, yes, they usually set up a big square. I was going to say that would be good. Um, if the, it's the firehouse, it's still usually a big U because the screen's in the front. Now, is this open to the public? Absolutely. Okay. I assumed it was. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. And I will try to get online to go. My understanding is just as the meeting starts, I would get online and then you would vote, I guess, to make sure it's okay for me to be online, Carrie? It was, uh, yeah, typically that's hot hands. Although, it's, since it would be a county meeting, it's typically run by. It's by Chris, yeah. So, but we'll, we can to take care of that, Mr. Vance. Okay. okay, thank you. Don't we usually go into session and they go into session? Yeah, we do it one at a time. My, yeah. my comment was that we usually go into session as well as the Board of Supervisors yes. goes into session. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then the computer would go into session <laughs> for me to be part of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just wondering whose computer we would use as we go into session. <laughs> well, I don't know that we have all the details worked out right this moment. Okay, but, so okay. we have a few weeks. We can get there. All so. right. But I have faith in Mr. Vance. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate sounds good. All right. All right, Dr. Benson. Do you have a superintendent's report for us? I do. I want to highlight um, an event we had this past weekend, this past Saturday. Um, very proud. We had uh, 34 staff members um, dedicate their Saturday, a good part of the day, to hosting our very own hiring fair here in King George at the Middle School. It's very successful. Um, I'll share this now, and I appreciate it. This is the crew. I'll hold it up so you all can see it. Yeah. I don't know if there is a camera that maybe we can get that, but this was the crew that uh, responded Saturday morning early. Um, so my hat's off to A, the leadership we have in our school division to take the initiative to host a hiring fair for just King George. Um, and then B, my gratitude to my colleagues who made that day possible um, and ultimately conducted 102 interviews with prospective candidates for employment. Um, of those, then we've already issued nine letters of intent. We expect more. And again, these would be uh, current vacancies we have or vacancies we're aware of that we'll have going into next year. So we're uh, getting ahead of it, so to speak, um, and out there kind of getting, uh, getting the best candidates uh, to work with our children. So my, again, my hat's off. I appreciate the uh, taking the initiative, Mr. Zierski and the staff and HR, and then um, 
you know, it was an all hands on deck kind of day with a lot of stripes, as you can tell, you know, a lot of horizontal stripes. <laughs> and so we were easy to spot. But anyway, my hat's off to them and gratitude. And uh, I just wanted to make our uh, community aware that uh, we do have job opportunities. If we have folks that are interested, please make contact with us so we can see if you, uh, uh, if we have a place for you on the bus, so to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Dr. Benson. All right, now for our board comment, Mr. Bush. I wanna thank the junior ROTC. They did a marvelous job and I appreciate all the explanations that were given to you. That was uh, about what they do and uh, the outcome of uh, those uh, students to participate in that and where they end up after they graduate is wonderful. And then uh, of course the PTA council, uh, reflections of the visual arts, music, literature, film, photography, that was, that was very good. And um, then of course the, uh, the science fair participants, um, some of those were, um, were very impressive. Um, and um, I think that just shows the, uh, the high caliber of students that we have here in this division. And um, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Ms. Hawk, wanna yes, thank move you. your, Gail, move your mic down. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I use a gentler touch. Um, just a quick uh, kudos, as Dr. Benson said, to the career fair. Uh, that was a, an exciting event. It got, um, I got several calls from staff members who were excited about it, who were excited about going to work on Saturday to interview people that um, they weren't sure whether they would show up or not. And they were all delighted to have folks show up for their interviews. They said the process went incredibly smoothly. So a real shout out to, to Mrs. Yazerski and Michelle Gordon. Um, it's just, this, these these bode good tidings, I think, for the future years. And everybody who called me said, we want to continue doing it this way. <laughs> um, the other thing, uh, I am always in awe of the science projects. They, they get more impressive every year. Um, and, it, it, and more interesting and, uh, and I, I just, encourage all of our families to get involved in the science fair. Um, we, um, we have so many levels of participation that it doesn't have to be a big electrochemical physics project, even if your dad has a doctorate in physics, it can be a simple thing and an interesting piece. Um, and some of these same ideas that start in middle school science fair end up as projects for Chesapeake Bay Governor's School senior projects and move into graduate theses. And we've seen that happen over the years. And that's, and I wanna say thank you to all the science teachers and all those who are uh, in elementary level doing their science work with their little guys because it happens at every grade and that's the exciting part. So um, I wanna thank you to all of the, the staff. Uh, this is March and March is generally a very long month, but with the calendar change, we have a break. And I think it's a much needed break. You know, I, I was uh, again struck by the character education program word of the month is perseverance. And I think it, it is paying off. Uh, we're, we're coming through um, the protocols for a variety of issues. Uh, we certainly have hopes and prayers that the world will persevere in a, a seeking peace uh, wherever it is needed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawk. Dr. Cartwright. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I feel very confident in the future with all the students I've seen tonight, especially with the PTA County Council Reflections with Ms. Rinko. Very impressive. I think it's just wonderful that our students are having these positive experiences and, and success. And success will lead for success today and success tomorrow. And uh, Piedmont Reg Regional Science Fair participants, Ms. Saunders, 
that was also very impressive with all the um, science projects. Um, I don't know if very many people know this, but it's quite phenomenal when you have so many students in an organization that participate with science fair projects. Again, we're preparing our students for the future. And I was very impressed with the junior ROTC program, especially with their citizenship program. And as you all know, we're having such conflicts in the world and we need to, we need to really um, help our students with self-confidence, endurance, physical fitness, and to be a better citizen. And that's going to make a great American. And for the uh, hiring fair, I just wanted to say with the budget, and with all the um, difficulties we have keeping teachers, we wanna keep in mind that we wanna have good quality teachers. We want good, qual good quality teacher retention as well. And teacher retention is critical for the future of education, as well as recruiting new people. So very important. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Mr. Rolls. I don't have anything to say that has been said before already, so I'll keep this short. Um, always great to see the kids here showing, seeing they're doing good things to art and showing us off, showing off the science fair projects. And as I said before, I know the quality of our JROTC program is is second to none, so it's a real feather in our cap, and real proud of that. All right, thank you, Mr. Rolls. Yes, the peril of going last is sounding like a broken record, so I'll also keep it short. Um, yeah, awesome, great to see all of our students out here. Um, also very excited to hear about the career fair. That's great. I'm glad to hear that that was we were as successful as we were. That's definitely good news. And I'm looking forward to Steam Night on Thursday. So that's about that's where I am. So um, with that, uh, we will move on to closed session if we have a motion. Pursuant to state code section 2.2-3711.A.1, for the purpose of discussion, consideration of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, substitutes, and retirements of employees of the school board, I move that we enter closed session. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries. We're now.
Do we have a motion to return to open session? I move that the Keene George County School Board return to open session and certify that pursuant to state code 2.2-3712.D, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements under this chapter, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the public body. Second. Do you certify? Yes, I certify. Sorry. Yes. I certify. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. We have now returned to open session. Do we have an action to approve personnel as presented? I move that we approve personnel as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We're now adjourned until March 23rd.